morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Tim Stopko, and I'm going to be talking about embedded system security today. Um, introductory uh, seminar, so uh, this is some pretty basic stuff for security. Um, hopefully, for some of you, it will be uh, a review. Some of you will be new. Um, and here we go. So what are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to look at why we're covering embedded security. Uh, and then we're going to look at some general security issues. We're going to look at the building blocks of security, cryptography, hashing, and integrity checking. And we're going to be looking at embedded systems and specific concerns that relate to embedded systems, such as performance and optimization and physical security. So why embedded security? Well, there's an increased focus on the networking of embedded systems, and this increases the threat of attack. Security for many applications is an afterthought or largely ignored, so uh, it's very important that we add security, because without security, embedded solutions can become embedded liabilities. The basic idea is if you have an embedded system, you probably need security. So what are the, some of the challenges in securing embedded systems? Well, one of the problems is that security can be very resource intensive. And if you're using an inexpensive, low power uh, embedded device, um, this can be a big challenge. Cryptography is also notoriously expensive and it can you know, basically make security uh, impossible for many embedded devices. Some of the protocols as well um, are very large and their algorithms are very complex. And this can make security, again, very expensive. Another problem is that security is thought of as being extremely difficult. And unfortunately, it often is. And one of the biggest problems is that there's actually no correct solution. Security is based upon the application itself and it really varies and can vary radically from application to application. So to get started, we're going to look at some basic security principles. The first of which is keep it simple. And why would you want to keep an application simple for security? Well, the number one enemy of security is a poorly understood or just plain poor implementation. You have an implementation you don't understand then any feature can be a security hole. Um, keeping it simple also has the bonus of reducing system resource needs and your project cost. So how do we keep an application simple for security? Well, eliminate all necessary, unnecessary functionality. Uh, this may seem rather straightforward, but you have to really evaluate and analyze your application to figure out what functionality you actually truly need, and you should eliminate anything that you truly don't. You should also strive for simplicity in your code and in your hardware. Uh, this is a very important concept. Um, a lot of times engineers have a tendency to make things more complex than they need to be, and that additional complexity makes it harder to understand the implementation. I mean, if you don't understand the implementation, then you can't possibly keep your application secure. You should look to use pre-existing and proven implementations of security mechanisms, such as protocols or algorithms, whenever possible, since those proven implementations, the bugs have been worked out, the holes have been plugged, and it's going to be a lot easier for you to actually utilize that security rather than having to debug what's gone wrong with your own implementation. Finally, you should develop strict requirements at the beginning of your project and adhere to them. Changes to the requirements should involve a deep... <laughs>